Hi, and welcome to DC Health. Today I'm going to be talking about the hormone leptin. Now for those of you who don't know what leptin is, it's a vital hormone secreted by our white adipose tissue or our fat cells on our hips, buttocks and thighs. What this hormone does is communicate with the brain and it governs the whole way our nervous system and our hormonal system work. Problems with this hormone leptin can lead the way to obesity, heart disease, cancer, diabetes, bone problems, immune problems, and a whole host of other diseases. What I want to do today is teach you how leptin works when the body is in balance or homeostasis, what happens when leptin goes out of balance, and what steps we can then take to remedy the problem. Now for the first thing we're going to look at, how leptin is supposed to work, when we eat, we basically are fueling our body. The hormone leptin senses this fuel coming into the body and communicates to the brain to a small gland called the hypothalamus and then that then sets our metabolic rate and our hormonal system. When leptin levels drop, we get hungry again, we eat, leptin levels rise and we keep that cycle going. So it's a constant cycle of leptin falling and rising governing our metabolic rate. Now when leptin goes out of balance, as in the case with excess weight, most people have too much leptin. Now this seems a little bit strange because too much leptin would mean that the person has a really fast metabolism. That's not what actually happens. What happens is the brain acquires what's called leptin resistance. So the brain can't actually receive the signal from leptin anymore. What the body will then do is increase appetite and decrease our metabolic rate. This obviously leads the way to obesity. This then causes a whole bunch of other problems. It then leads to what's called insulin resistance. Now a lot of people have heard of insulin resistance and know that it's the precursor for type 2 diabetes. What happens is our pancreas also has leptin receptors. So when we keep on eating and keep on secreting leptin, the pancreas actually becomes worn out and doesn't sense leptin anymore. It keeps on pumping out insulin, which wears the pancreas down. This leads to a third problem, which is called adrenaline resistance. Now everyone's heard of the hormone adrenaline as it's the one that gets you going in fight or flight. How adrenaline works in our body is it acts on our fat cells around our stomach in particular and mobilizes them so we can use that fat as fuel. When the fat cells get constant stimulation from adrenaline, as what will happen in insulin resistance and leptin resistance, is that they too will then develop adrenaline resistance. So with overweight people, we see three distinct problems that are all interrelated and connect, connected. We see leptin resistance, insulin resistance, and adrenaline resistance all playing off each other and creating this circle of problems. What we want to do now is actually look at the ways that we can remedy this problem and prevent this from happening. Now, the first rule of leptin that we want to do to make sure it functions properly is never eat after dinner. Leptin rises in our body in a cycle, as all other hormones do. They go up and down throughout a 24 hour day in what's known as a circadian rhythm. Leptin actually peaks at night at around 9 o'clock, around the time we should be winding down for bed. Now this is great because when this leptin is high, what it does, it basically increases our metabolic rate and stops us wanting to eat. One of the first signs of leptin resistance is that you have uncontrollable cravings at night i.e. you need to have that dessert. So, our first rule is not eat at night after dinner. We want to ideally leave around 11 to 12 hours from our last meal and breakfast. This gives our body plenty of time to digest our food, to use the available nutrients for repair, and have restful sleep. The second rule of leptin is to eat three meals a day. Now, a lot of the popular advice says to eat five to six meals a day and small meals. This is good advice if you're an athlete, a bodybuilder, or someone who has a very physical job. Although for most of us, that's not really the case. Most of us work desk jobs, IT jobs, and other jobs like that. When we eat all the time, we constantly are spiking insulin, which leads to insulin resistance. Ideally, what we want to do is eat and have insulin rise, which is normal, and that will last for about two to three hours. What happens at around that stage is a hormone called glucagon kicks in. Now glucagon does the opposite of insulin. Insulin is a storage hormone, 
and glucagon is a mobilizing hormone. What it does, it basically tells our liver to get our fat cells and start processing them for energy, burning fat. So if we wait five to six hours between meals, we get our insulin rise and it falls down. And as insulin falls, our glucagon starts rising and starts burning our stored fuel. It's a very effective way for people to lose weight and it also prevents overeating. If you find that you have a very difficult time lasting five to six hours without eating, it's a clear sign that you have some kind of leptin imbalance. The third rule of leptin is to not eat large meals. If overweight, you want to have a slightly smaller plate than what you think you would have, and it's really important to eat slowly. Our stomach releases a satiety message to our brain that lets us know when we're full. Basically, as the stomach wall expands, it has a certain set point where it'll tell the brain we've had enough food. Now, what most people don't realize is how big our stomach is. Our stomach is roughly the size of two fists put together. Now, that's not a lot of food. Most people's plates are far bigger than this. If we can encourage ourselves to eat slowly, we will actually have the stomach fill up and it will have more time to send a signal to our brain to tell us that we're full. Most people today don't really chew their food. They just throw it all down, they're done in about five minutes and they're still looking for something else. This leads to indigestion, low stomach acid levels and a whole bunch of other problems. If we eat slowly, we'll not only enjoy our food and get more nutrition out of it, but we'll be able to eat less food and be more satisfied. Anytime we're looking at losing weight, we want to have less calories. I never recommend low calorie diets to my clients. I always want moderate calories, but I don't want calorie excess either. Now the next rule is eat a high protein breakfast. There's a number of reasons for this. The first reason is not many people eat breakfast. And it's been told 101 times breakfast is the most important meal of the day. When we eat breakfast, we want to ensure a high protein breakfast for a number of reasons. Number one is protein has a very high thermic effect, basically meaning it elevates our metabolism. Protein is also the most sad the most filling of all the nutrients, so when we eat protein, we're full for longer. Have you ever noticed after eating a big bowl of rice, you're hungry in about 20 minutes? That just shows that carbohydrates aren't the most filling nutrient. The third reason for protein is that protein actually stimulates glucagon synthesis. So what it does, it sets us up in a fat burning mode for the rest of the day. Now the last rule of leptin is to actually reduce the amount of carbohydrates eaten. Now this is actually relative to your body type. In another article, I'll be talking about the difference between the three metabolic types that you can have and how much protein versus carbs versus fats each should have. But in general, most people have insulin resistance issues. If you have any kind of fat just below your shoulder blade, you can actually pinch a bit of fat. It's a fair sign that you've got some kind of insulin problems. Now, carbohydrates are the main food that spike insulin. So we want most people to reduce them. When I talk about reducing carbohydrates, I don't want people to reduce good carbohydrates such as broccoli, cauliflower, sweet potato, and fruits, our good wholesome foods that have lots of nutrition in them, but to get rid of the processed foods, white bread, white sugar, white rice, sweets, garbage like that that has no nutrition value and actually robs our body of nutrients that we need. So just to cap those five rules again, the five rules of leptin are never eat after dinner. Allow 11 to 12 hours between dinner and breakfast. Never go to bed in a full stomach. Rule number two, eat three meals a day. Basically, you want to allow five to six hours between meals with no snacking in between. The only exception to the rule is if you're an elite athlete or in a high load of training where you will need more calories. Third rule, do not eat large meals. Eat slowly and chew your food properly. Let the hunger signal reach the brain. Fourth rule, eat a high protein breakfast. Ensure you eat breakfast and include protein. Good protein sources are eggs, yogurts, chicken, fish, whatever you can actually handle. And fifth rule is reduce the amount of carbohydrates eaten. Carbohydrates are really important to get rid of because they provoke insulin resistance. In the article, we'll also go over few different supplements that will help with leptin and insulin resistance and how you can use them. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching and we'll see you soon.